My brothers and sisters in Christ, in this season when we celebrate the birth of Jesus, let it be our duty and delight to hear once more the message of the angels and go in heart and mind to Bethlehem to see the Son of God lying in a manger. As we hear the reading of God's holy word, let us reflect on our time of creation in community with one another. Find comfort in the promise that the blind will see, the deaf will hear, the lame dance and the silent burst into song. 
join with Mary, the favored handmaid, and offer ourselves in service to God's holy and life-saving purpose for the world. Bless the name of God of our salvation who brings the dawn of forgiveness and salvation to those who live in the shadow of death and despair. Raise our voices with the messenger who announces good news of great joy to all people and give thanks to the one whose power has made us the children of God. As we mark once more the mystery of the word made flesh, let us join with the song of saints and angels and hear our hearts ring with carols and hymns of praise. But first, let us remember the poverty of the birth of the Prince of Peace and pray for the poor, the cold, the hungry, and those among us who find that there is no room for them in the inn. Let us remember the flight of the Holy Family into Egypt and pray for the oppressed, refugees, and isolated, and those on the margins of our society. Let us remember that the Lord of glory experienced the pain of life and death, and let us pray for the sick, the anxious, the weary, and the bereaved, especially in this time of a pandemic. And remembering the promise that Christ shall reign forever and ever, let us pray for the rulers of the nations, for peace and justice on earth, for the unity and mission of the church, that we may be a sign that God's rule on earth has already begun. With joy in our hearts, let us hear again the story of the birth of Christ and join with Mary and Joseph, with shepherds and wise men, and with all our forebears in faith in offering our worship. These are the generations of the heaven and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground, but a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted the garden in Eden, in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. And the tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may freely eat of every tree in the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat it, you shall die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to, to all cattle, to all the birds of the air, and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused, caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. 
And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. God of all life, you have formed our world and our humanity with such beauty and care. May we live out of gratitude, share in your creative love, and never be ashamed to follow your call. Through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Micah, chapter 6, verses 6 to 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
the return of the redeemed to Zion. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away.
A reading from the first chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be? since I am a virgin. The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. 
And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Once in shall be to all people. 
For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste, and found Mary, and Joseph, and the babe, lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things, and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. Thanks be to God.
eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too.
A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came became the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of, the, not of blood or of the will or the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word came, became flesh and lived among us. We have seen his glory, the glory, of, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have received grace upon grace. Law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known.
of Christ from the Chapel of the Holy Apostles at Church House in Toronto in thanksgiving for all those who have shared in this service of lessons and carols from cathedrals across Canada as a sign of our fellowship in community together in the Anglican Church of Canada. In this year of bewilderment when we have been separated from those we love by illness and isolation and lockdowns, when we have relinquished so many certainties for the unpredictability of daily life, we may wonder, where is God? We need to hear the stories about how God chooses to connect with this world. We need that to ground us for the long haul of this pandemic. God is here, in our midst, just as God came to be in our midst as a baby, in the ordinary difficulties of daily life, whether that be census or pandemic. God is with us, Emmanuel. This Christmas, read the story over and over again Take comfort in God's presence, not in the halls of power and privilege, but with ordinary people caught up in events beyond their control. And remember all that this baby would be and do to show us the love of God in our midst. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace to God's people on earth. Amen. In joy and humility, let us pray to the creator of the universe, saying, Lord, grant us peace. By the good news of our salvation brought to Mary by the angel, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the mystery of the Word made flesh, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the birth in time of your timeless Son, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the submission of the maker of the world to Mary and Joseph of Nazareth, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. 
By the baptism of the Son of God in the river Jordan, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. Grant that the kingdoms of this world may become the kingdom of your Savior, Jesus Christ. Hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. Almighty God, you wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored our human nature. May we share the divine life of your Son, Jesus Christ, who humbled himself to share our humanity and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. With joy in our hearts, let us gather our prayers into the words our Savior taught us. May the God of infinite goodness scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your hearts with holiness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you forever. Amen. <laughs>